Hello, welcome to uh, MAT 100 Applied Math. And in this uh, lesson, we're going to discuss or review division of whole numbers and order of operation 1.4 and 1.5. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a few problems out of exercise 1.4. This is on page 48. And these are some division problems. We're just going to go over them and see what we can do. So let's erase this out. Let's we'll start with that number 11. Here we have a problem. We got 167 divided by seven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write this problem as in um, this particular form. Okay, the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. So we're looking for the quotient. Now, each one, we have the number 167. Over each one of these digits, we want to put a number. So we're taking a look at seven. Seven can't go into one, it's too small. So we're going to put a zero, and we're going to go into the next set of digits, which is 16. Seven into 16 is two, because two times seven is 14. And then we're going to subtract, right? 14 from 16 is two. And our next step is gonna to be to bring down the seven. And we'll start all over again. Seven into 27 is three. And that number has to go over to seven. Three times seven is 21. Now we have a remainder six we don't have any more numbers we're not going to use decimals so we're going to write this as 23 remainder six like that and that's all there is to it so the key is knowing where to put the two and the three okay we need to start with the uh, two over the last digit of what we're dividing into but use this as kind of a holder a space uh holder so we don't have to worry about where these numbers go. All right, let's try another problem. I'm gonna try number 14. Here we have three, I'm just gonna put it in the proper form. Three, three, one, zero. Okay, so three divides into three, it came in one time. And there's no remainder, okay? So we're bringing down the three. And we start over again. Three and the three goes one time. One times three is three. And there's no remainder. We're bringing down the one. Three can't go into one. So I need a holder up here. I need something to hold that space, <clears throat> which in this case is going to be a zero. Zero times three is zero. Zero from one is one, and I'm going to bring down the zero. Three goes into 10, three times. This way we know we're putting our number into the correct order. It's not 113, it's 1,103. So we we'll put the nine here and subtract, and we get a remainder of one. So divide, subtract, divide, Subtract, divide, can't do it, put a zero, subtract, divide, subtract. So we're always dividing, bringing down, divide, subtract, bring down, divide, subtract, bring down. Okay, just three steps. All right, let's try another one. All right, I picked a little bit harder one here, but in effect, one that you probably won't want to do. 19 divided into 382. So 19 will not go into 3. 19 into 38. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking this is a 20. This is pretty close. And I'm thinking 382 is about 400. 
20 can't go into four, but 20 could go into 40 two times. So in my mind, I'm thinking 20 into 40 right here. I'm thinking 20 into 40. Or I could even think two into four. So 20 into 40, I should have two. And I like to multiply off to the side because there's not much room there. Eight and three. 38, well, it comes out exactly the same. So I'm gonna subtract and we know that's a zero. Just put a small zero. And I'm gonna bring down to two. Well, 19 can't go into two, but I need something above it. Every one of these digits needs a number over it. So I'm gonna put a zero, multiply it, subtract, nothing to bring down. So that's my remainder, 20, remainder two. Now, of course, you probably do these on your calculator, but you know, if your calculator breaks down or you don't have one, you need having to know how to do this. All right. How about uh, here's a problem number in, in the B group number eight seventy five divided into twenty four hundred. Okay, 75 can't go into 2. 75 can't go into 24. So now we've got it lined up with the correct digit that we're supposed to go into. So 75, I'm going to have to take some guesses. Um, I'm thinking 3 times 7 is 20. And 21 is a little less than 24. So I'm guessing that this will go in here 3 times. I'm kind of thinking to myself, how many times would seven go into 24? Instead of 75 into 240, I'm just not getting off this number here and this number here. Now, this is just a guess. It might be too big, but let's try it and see what happens. Three times five is 15, carry the one. 3 times 7 is 21, and 1 makes 22. And I see that's smaller than this, so that's good. I, I number has to be smaller. So it's going to go 3 times. 3 times that is 225. Subtract. OK, I'm going to borrow. And see, this is why some people have a lot of trouble with You know, there's not much room here to borrow. You know, we have to change this to a 3 and make this a 1. And there's sometimes, you know, maybe you need to spread your numbers out more. I, I have them pretty tight here. So that's a five. And two from three is one. I'm going to bring down. Get 70. And I want to make sure that this number, when I subtract, is smaller than the 75. If it's bigger, it should have won four times. Okay. Bring down the zero. So I'm thinking... 7 into 15, this is what I'm thinking in my mind. This is my head, and I'm thinking this. Hmm, what would that be? Okay, so I'm thinking of 2. So I'm going to put a... 75 times 2 and check it out. 150. Yeah, exactly the same. 150. So there's my answer. 32 came on exact. All right, so I'm kind of, you know, trying to think. And what I'm doing, I'm looking at the first digit. Or I might have rounded this off to 8. 8 into 15, well, pretty close to 2. So I'm trying to approximate a number. Uh, division has a lot of skills in it. Let's look at problem number 11. We have to approximate. We have to know multiplication. We have to know subtraction. Lots of different skills. All right, 53 can't go into 6. 53, and I've been doing these for a long time, and I stopped with the 0. 1. 1 plus 53 is 53. I don't really need to write that one down. 
and this would be three, and this would be, whoa, no, it wouldn't be. Three for three is, this would be a zero, this would be a one. So now I'm gonna bring down, and I'm thinking, okay, five into a 10, instead of 50 into a 100, to cross that off, would be about two, and two's a starting point, you know? I could kind of think, it might be too big. So I'm gonna put 53 times two, that's 106. See, that's too big. So I'm gonna to have to go one again, 53. And again, not much space to subtract. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna change this to a nine and this to a 10. So three from 10 is seven, and five from nine is four. 53, 47, add up to 100. Okay, now I'm gonna, and see my, my numbers are getting sloppy here. Sometimes I like to put a little arrow head. So I'm bringing down this seven. And if you're like I am, sometimes these get all moved over, you know? So 53 and a 47, but see, five and a 47. And because this is a big number, it's really close to 53, 53, 47. I'm going to, it's usually a nine or an eight. I'm gonna guess a nine and take 53 times nine. If that doesn't work, then I use an eight. There's a seven, carry the two, 50, 45, and two, 47. Perfect. So we went in nine times. I'm gonna put a nine up here. Came out exact, zero. So I've got my answer, and I'm very happy. All right, so I'm going to go to my next uh, number here, and I'm going to try. I think that was all I was going to do. I'll try 47. I'll try number uh, 20. Okay, so I'm going to estimate 47. And again, I'm thinking of, let's put 47 into 94. So I'm thinking more like 50 into 100, or I'm thinking more like five into 10. And this is how my mind is working. 47, I'm just with these two digits, because I know it can't go into so 94, 47, 94, pretty close to 15 to 100, pretty close to five to 10. So I'm thinking two, huh? So 47 times two, 14 carried to one, eight, and one more, nine. Okay, 94, it goes in exact, two, 94. So that's going to be a zero, so I'm going to bring down, I'm not going to write to zero, I'm just going to bring down to four. But I see 47 can go into four, so I need a placeholder, a zero, to hold that place. Now I'm going to bring down to two. Well, 47 can't go into 42, it's too small. So another zero, hold the place, now I'm going to bring down the five. Weird problem. Huh? So now I'm thinking 47 into 425. So I'm thinking 50 into probably 400, something like that. So I'm thinking five into 40. I'm guessing it's going to be about an eight, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to try 47 times eight. Seven times eight. Pretty hard one, 56, carry the five, 32, and five, 37. Well, let's see, that's a pretty pretty big number. Um, let's try it and see. If, if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to try a nine, but I think maybe it will work, I don't know. We can't go, six from five can't go, I'm gonna borrow. Six for 15 is nine. Seven from, I'm 
I'm gonna borrow again. 11 is four. See, 49 is bigger than 47. So therefore, I I don't want to do this. I want I don't want to put an eight there and then put a one here. There's no digit to put it over. You know, go one again and go 47 and two. Then that's not going to work. That's not the number. This is just too big. So I get out the old trusty eraser, erase this out, erase all of this, out, erase this, so I can see it's 425. Okay. Now I know the way over. So I'm going to take 47 times 9. 63, carry the 6. 36 and 6. 42. See, I'm, my, my dad always told me, let the paper and the pencil do the work. Let this do the work. Do some work up here. This is your scratch paper. It doesn't matter if it's messy. Okay, how many times did I go in there? Nine times, don't forget to put that up there. Subtract, and now I have a remainder of two. So I want to be kind of careful about doing this. You know, and with a little practice, you can get good too. And sometimes they write it like this. I noticed 24 was written this way, 901 over 17. That's simply being 17 and then 901. And I know sometimes these are hard. Again, I'm going to think of 220 into 1,000, maybe something like that. And I would start this off with a 5, maybe. And put a 0 there to hold the space. And I'll be off to the races. OK, the second part of our lesson is going to be order of operation. Order of operation means that no matter where we go in the world, the problem is done the same way. Math is a universal language. It can be done. You go to, I've had students from Saudi Arabia. I've had students from China. I've had students from all over the world. And we still can communicate in mathematics. Sometimes we can't speak very well to each other, but we do understand the order of operation. The order of operation is this. Uh, I remember a little saying, it's please excuse my dear answer. I guess she burped or something and we have to excuse her. She's getting old like your teacher. Okay, please excuse my dear Aunt Sarah. So, this is a little saying to help us remember the order of operation. P stands for parentheses. And E stands for uh, exponents. We can show an exponent this way. Sometimes we show an exponent with an up arrow. An up arrow indicates an exponent. So please excuse powers and ex exponents. You know, exponents is those little things up there. Okay, we, so we always try to do those first. We might not have any today, but that's what we work on. The next thing is multiply and divide. If we're not sure what to do, we're multiply and divide. And we're gonna do this from just the way we read, left to right. And I'll come back to this in just a second. And then the last thing we do is add and subtract. And we do that from left to right, I abbreviate left to right. Okay, so we scan the problem. Let me give you a little problem like this. Okay, so kind of a, a tricky little thing. We've got addition there, we got division, and we got multiplication. So 
we look for parentheses and exponents. We don't see any. We don't see anything like this. We don't see anything like that. Okay, we go to step number two, level number two, multiply and divide, okay? But we go from left to right, just like we're reading it. So we go, we don't do the addition. We're gonna do this division first because division in this case came from the left to the right. So we're gonna do that for times three. So we're simplifying one thing at a time. Now we're gonna scan the problem. And again, we're not gonna do addition, even though we would want to, it's usually easier. We're gonna scan the problem, but we're gonna go do the multiplication next. And then finally, the last thing, after all those things are done, then we do the addition and the subtraction, 14. So even though we might in our mind say, I want to divide this by, you know, I had this up, Chan divided by two is five, and five times three is 15, it would give us the wrong answer. So no matter where we go in the world, we have to do these problems the same way. It's math is a universal language. It's, it's done, it doesn't matter if you go to Claypool or you go to Timbuktu, uh, you're going to do the, the problem the same way. You're going to do the parentheses, the multiplication and division, and finally, lastly, the addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction is the same thing. Let me give you two problems here. Suppose I had minus three is, oh, excuse me, plus two. Trouble writing, as you can see. And then what if I add eight plus three minus two? So let's try these two problems. Eight, this problem, subtraction came first, it's the left to right. I'm gonna add that, five, then to two, get seven. Here, the addition came first before subtraction, left to right, I'm gonna add that, then subtract it to nine. See how basically they're almost the same problem, but it comes out and comes out to this way. Sometimes we get a little lazy. I know it's faster to say, oh, I can add faster. I just take this and five from eight is three. You see, you get the wrong answer. This is not X minus five. That's not it. Left to right. L to R, left to right. Okay, so let's try some here. And I picked some problems out. I'm going to kind of skip over some stuff. I picked out some problems here on page 54 of your assignment. And uh, I'm going to try number 13. 16 plus 5 times 3 plus 6. Now, notice they put the three plus six in the parentheses. If we didn't do that, we would think we had to multiply the 15 times the three. But they wanted you to add this first. So that's why they use parentheses to tell you one first. It's an indicator. Do this first. Do first. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to add that. 16 plus Five. I'm going to bring down the time sign, nine. If they don't put a time sign, we assume that's going to be times anyhow, but we're not working with variables, so this X means times. Okay, step number two. Notice I'm doing these kind of one step at a time, 16 plus 45. Get in the habit of writing this down because now um, two years from now, you might forget it. So 60 plus 45, then finally add them together. The more you write, they do say that writing kind of writes it in your mind, you know, by writing it down. If you put it in your head, a lot of times you're going to mess up. 
I'm going to write it down here. 6 and 5 is 11 carry to 1. So it's 61. Okay. So that's, the, that's kind of the idea behind it. We're going to do the parentheses, then the multiplication, then the addition. Notice we're always doing the problem backwards, aren't we? We're kind of almost going this way, uh, kind of strange. Well, that's because this is from Arabia. Um, our algebra and our math like this has come from uh, Middle East, Middle Eastern countries, and uh, around the 1350s, 1400s, we, we gained this great amount of knowledge of math. And uh, in Arabia, they read they write from right to left, so it's a little bit different. That's how they read also. So uh, we're different from the way we do things. But anyhow, that's the uh, idea. So do this first, and we've got to make. All right, let's try another one. Here's, a, here's one that was crazy. Five times eight plus six divided by six minus 12 times two. I'm like a detective. I'm on the scene. I'm looking at this thing. And I'm going to scan through and I'll do all my multiplications and divisions first. I'm going to multiply and divide L to R. Okay, so I'm going to scan this. This is 40 plus, I'm going to bring that, in that let's cross off as I do it. 6 divided by 6, I'm going to do that. Bring down the sign minus 12 times 2, 24. So I'm going to do this operation. These are operations. I'm going to do this operation. I'm going to do this operation. Finally, I got addition and subtraction, but I'm going to add first because it comes first. Then I'm going to subtract off to 24, 41, take away 24, borrow 17. And I've got my answer nice and neat. You notice also these kind of come down in a way so they kind of are focusing on the answer. They're kind of triangular, focusing right on that answer. All right, here's another one, uh, number 21. This has a parentheses in it. But inside the parentheses, it's a little confusing because we have a time sign too. So in our mind, you know, we might want to say, oh, 10 times 9 is 90. You know, that seems kind of logical. But math isn't always as logical as we think. So we actually want to do this part first, this multiplication. It's higher in order than uh, addition. So this is really 2 times. I'm going to keep the parentheses, 6 plus 36, like that. I'm not out of the parentheses yet, I'm still in it. Now I'm going to get out by adding those together two times, and I can do that in my head, 42. And finally, two times 42 would be 84. So this one did, did that first, then I did this, and I did this, finally I got to my answer. All right, that's what I'm going to do with you is go into it's so confusing with the weird stuff on it. Let's try this 37. Six points, 12 times four. And the whole thing is divided by 15 minus three times two. So it's almost like this whole thing was in a parentheses, do that, do the bottom, and then figure out the answer. So I'm going to kind of do this one across. So the first thing I'm going to do in here, let's find my pen, here we go. I'm going to do this multiplication. So this becomes six, It's giving me a little trouble here. Six plus four times 12, that would be 48. 
And on the bottom, I'm going to look, and again, I'm going to do this multiplication. 15 minus 6. Okay, now I'm going to add the 6 and the 48. And that should be, I could do it on scratch paper. That should be 54. And I'm going to do this subtraction. And that would be 9. Now, finally, I don't want to stop here. This is a division problem. This is 54 divided by 9. And of course, we know that's 6. It depends just by giving out and so am I. So um, make sure that you try these problems. Have a day. Stay healthy. Stay wise.